everyone welcome to vaish is youtube channel hope you all doing well so this is episode number 4 of uh, art and culture before getting into the video if you have not yet subscribed to vaish is youtube channel do subscribe and check out all the playlist and for upsc test series and other details you can contact vaish sir at whatsapp 7200681675 you can also mail to the mail id which is shown on the slide so in the previous video we have discussed about post mauryan art and architecture udaygiri and kandagiri caves of odisha stupas and sculptures of post mauryan period uh, so uh, during post mauryan period we had uh, three prominent uh, sculptures uh, they are gandhara school madura school and amravati school we have also discussed about the uh, gupta age and its architecture stupas and sculpture during the gupta age and ajanta cave elora cave bag cave junagadh cave mandabeshwar cave and udaygiri cave of gujarat were also been discussed in the previous uh, video so in this uh, don't be confused with the udaygiri cave of gujarat and udaygiri cave of odisha so these two caves are entirely different from each other Udaygiri cave of Odisha belonged to the post Mauryan period where Udaygiri cave of Gujarat belonged to the Gupta age so in this video we will be discussing the important topic temple architecture so temple architecture with the development of a square sanctum and pillared portico emerged during the Gupta period so the gradual progression or development from the flat roofed monolithic temples in the initial stage to the sculptured shihara in the later uh, years so this progression or development can be divided into five stages in the first stage uh, the temple had a flat roof and the temple was square in shape the portico was uh, developed in shallow pillars so the entire temple was built on a low platform uh, you can see here it is built in a low platform example temple number 17 at sanchi madhya pradesh in second stage it continued most of the uh, features of the early phase but uh, the uh, flat forms were higher or upright and the two story temple have also been found and important uh, feature of the second stage is this was covered with ambulatory passage way around the sanctum sanctorum or uh, garbhagriha so this passage way was used as pradikshana path example parvati temple at nachna kutara in uh, madhya pradesh in third stage we had the emergence of uh, shigara in the place of flat roof so in the earlier we had flat roof uh, in the uh, third stage we had the emergence of flat roof in curvilinear uh, shape so they were still quite uh, low and almost square that is curvilinear and in third stage there was the uh, panjayatan style of temple making introduced so in this panjayatan style of uh, temple making there were four subsidiary shrines along with the main temple uh, the main uh, temple was square and elongated mandapa in front of it giving it a rectangular shape the subsidiary shrines were uh, placed opposite to each other on either side of mandap giving the ground plan uh, crucified shape example uh, dasavada temple at deogar uttar pradesh and uh, durga temple at ehol karnataka you can have a look on the dasavada temple at uh, deogar so this temple is built in the upright uh, flat form and uh, it uh, its base is uh, the main temple is in square shape with the curvilinear uh, shihara in fourth stage the temple were almost similar to the previous phases except the main shrine which became more uh, rectangular example tap temple in maharashtra so you can see the main temple which is in rectangular shape so in fifth stage the circular uh, temples with shallow rectangular projections were uh, introduced and other features remain as same in the previous phases uh, example uh, maniar math at rajgir now let's see about the styles of temple architecture so nagara style dravidian style nayaka style veshara style hoyashala style vijayanagara style and pala and sena school adi Uh, different styles of temple architecture before knowing about the styles of temple architecture let have a look on the basic form of hindu temple so garbhagriha mandapa shihara and vahana 
these four are the basic form of hindu temple so sanctum sanctorum or garbhagriha a small room generally a cubicle is a house uh, for the principal deity of the temple and mantaba it is the entrance to the temple so it is generally this mantaba is generally designed to house large number of worshippers coming to sihara it is a mountain like spire uh, which shapes from the pyramidal to the curvilinear and vahana it is a vehicle of the main deity which is placed just before the garbhagriha now let's see about the nahara school of architecture so this nagara school of architecture emerged during the 5th century ad in the northern part of india uh, so this uh, nagara school had uh, sub, some sub schools emerged in the western central and uh, eastern part of the country so let's see the features of the nagara uh, style so the temples were generally in the panjaitan temple uh, style which consists of the subsidiary shrines and the uh, uh, main temple for the principal deity the presence of the assembly hall or mantabas in front of the principal shrine is also one of the feature of the nagara style of temple architecture and outside the garbhagriha images of the river goddess ganga and uh, amuna were placed there were no water reservoir uh, present in the temple premises and the temple were generally built on the upraised uh, platform the porticons had a pillared approach so these are the feature of the nagara style of uh, temple architecture now let's see the uh, three types of shiharas the first one is lachina or reka prasad so they were a square at the base and the wall curved to a point on top the next one is pamshana so they had a broader base and were shorter in height than the latina the slope upward on the straight line and the last type is vallabhi so vallabhi uh, it had a rectangular base uh, with a, f- a r- roof rising into a vaulted chambers and they were also called as wagon rooted uh, vaulted roof so the vertical end of the shihara ended in an horizontal floated disc or uh, disc known as the amalak so on the top of the amalak a spherical shape was placed known as the kalasha so inside the temple uh, the wall was divided into three vertical planes or radhas these temples were known as tri ratha temple later panjaratha shabda ratha and navaratha came into existence the amulatory passage way or the pradikshana path around the sanctum sanctorum was covered and the temple premises did not have a elaborate boundary wall or uh, gateway so you can have a look on the uh, horiz- uh, horizontal disc that is amalaka and the spherical shaped one called the kalasha under the nagara school there were three sub school emerged they are odisha school kajuraka school and solangi school the solangi school can also be known as the maru gujara style so uh, let's see about the odisha school this odisha school uh, developed in different part of india that is a different part of kalinka empire the there was no pillar in the porch instead iron griddles were used in the odisha school and uh, siharas and the odisha schools were known as rega dwell which is a vertical roof which suddenly curved inward sharply and mandaba was known as jahamogan in this region so the ground plan of the main temple was square and they were uh, surrounded by the boundary wall as in the dravidian style of uh, temple architecture so you can have a look on the odisha school of uh, temple architecture the mandaba which is all uh, known as the jahamogan uh, and the uh, sculpture that and the shihara which is known as the rega dwell so example of the odisha school of temple architecture is sun temple at konark also known as the black pagoda jagannath temple at puri lingaraja temple at bhubaneswar etc now we'll see about gajuraka school so it developed in the central part of india so in uh, chandela rulers developed this distinct uh, style of temple architecture by their own uh, so they named it uh, uh, so this kajuraka school can also be named as uh, chandala school the feature of this uh, temple are uh, the interior and exterior of the temple were lavishly decorated with carvings so sculptures were uh, generally erotic so this erotic uh, sculptures got their inspiration from vatsayanana and the kama sutra so the temples were made of uh, sandstone 
the temples of the uh, gajuraka school uh, had three chambers uh, garbagriha mantaba and ardha mantaba the temple had vestibular entrance to the garbagriha known as the antarala so the temple were uh, generally north to east facing and panchayatan style is continued uh, in kajurako school so even the subsidiary shrine also had the rekha prasad shikaras which like uh, look like a mountain range so in the previous phases uh, the panchayatan school uh, style of uh, temple making uh, we had uh, the main shrine with the shikara but not the subsidiary shrines but in kajurako the main shrine as well as the susp- uh, subsidiary shrine had the uh, shikarasa the temple were built in high flat form which belonged to the hindu and uh, jain religion example kandariya mahadeva temple lakshmanan temple at kajurago you can also have a look on vishwanath temple at kajurago which is also an example of kajurago school of temple architecture now let's see about the solanki school uh, which is also called as maru gujara style so this developed in the northern uh, northwestern part of india include gujarat and rajasthan under the patronage of uh, solanki rulers so features of this uh, solanki scholars uh, this uh, temple wall were devoid of uh, carvings that is they were free from carvings and uh, the garbagriha was uh, connected with the mantaba both internally as well as externally the porticos had a decorative arch gateway known as the torrents and the unique feature of solanki temple is the presence of step tank uh, known as the surya kunda so you can have a look on uh, surya kunda so the step of the tank were full of small temples with wooden carving present in them the cholangis were uh, used variety of materials like sandstone black basalt and uh, soft marble to make temples so most of the temple were east facing why because it is designed so that each year during the equinox the sun rays fall directly into the uh, central shrine so example modira sun temple in gujarat which is built by bhima 1 during uh, 1026 27 now let's see the temple architecture in south india so it emerged in the uh, peninsular india the temple architecture in south india began under the pallava ruler mahendra varman so uh, the temple developed during uh, pallava dynasty reflected the taste of individual rulers that is each ruler have their own style of temple architecture so it can be classified into four stages chronologically that is mahendra group uh, narma uh, narasimha group rajasimha group and nandivarma group the first stage is uh, mahendra uh, group so this is the first stage of pallava architecture the temple built under mahendra varma were basically rocked caves and under mahendra varman the temples were known as mantabas where in nahara style the mantabas were meant only as the assembly hall the second one is narasimha group so the rock, uh, rocket temples were decorated within intricate uh, sub, uh, sculptures under narasimha varma the mantabas were divided into separate radhas the biggest was uh, called as the dharma raja radha while the smallest one was uh, draupadi radha the design of the temple in the dravidian style of uh, architecture is a successor of the dharma raja radha then comes the rajasimha group so under rajasimha development of real structural temples uh, started in place of rocket temples example show temple at mahabalipuram and kailashina temple at kanchipuram then the last one is anandi varma group the temple of built during nandi varma uh, group is uh, very small in size so the feature of the temple were similar to the dravidian style of temple architecture so after the decline of the pallava dynasty uh, there emerged the new style that is um, new style in the temple uh, architecture that is by the chola kingdom which is known as dravidian style of temple architecture so this new style uh, also emerged in the started in the southern india later other uh, styles like vesara style nayaka style and vijayan uh, nagara style emerged in the southern region now let's see about the uh, dravidian style of temple architecture also known as chola architecture so under the patronage of uh, chola r- ruler hundreds of temples were built in south india now let's see the features of the uh, dravidian style or chola style 
so the uh, dravidian temples were surrounded by the high boundary walls and uh, in front of wall we had a high uh, entrance gateway known as the gopuram the temple were laid out in panjaitan style with a principal temple for and a four subsidiary shrines the spire in the form of a stepped pyramid that rises up linearly rather than curved is known as vimana so the octagon shaped crowning element is known as shikara similar to that of kalash of uh, uh, nagara temple but not a spherical so in uh, uh, nagara temple we have discussed that the uh, horizontal disk will have the horizontal floated disk that is amalaka above that we had a spherical shaped one called kalash in the same way in dravidian style of temple architecture an octagon shaped crowning uh, element called shikara can be found so only one vimana uh, in dravidian architecture on the top of main uh, temple where subsidiary shrine do not have the vimanas so only main temples will have the vimanas and not the subsidiary shrines so assembly hall was connected with the garbhagriha by the vestibular tunnel known as the antarala the entrance of the garbhagriha had a sculpture of uh, dwarpal mithun and uh, yaksha and presence of water tank inside the temple uh, was a unique feature of the dravidian style of uh, temple architecture uh, example bragadeshwara temple at uh, tanjavur uh, which is built by raja raja one so you can have the uh, look on bragadeshwara temple which is at tanjavur and you can have a basic uh, form of the dravidian style of architecture so this is endurance above that you'll have a gopuram and mantaba this linear structure which is called as vimana and above that you'll have a uh, octagon shaped uh, shikara so you'll have a garbhagriha over here now let's see the uh, chola sculptures so the important feature of the chola temple was the important placed on the decoration through this sculpture so important piece of uh, chola sculpture was the sculpture of nataraja uh, who is in tandava dance poster so the earliest dance uh, uh, earliest nataraja sculpture which has been excavated at uh, ravanapadi cave at ehol uh, during the chalukya ruler reached its peak under the chola kingdom so now let's see the feature of uh, nataraja sculpture so you can have a look on the uh, nataraja uh, sculpture in the uh, upper right hand uh, in the upper right hand uh, there holds the drum which signifies the sound of creation so all creation spring from a great sound of the damru in the uh, upper left hand you can see the eternal fire so which represent the uh, destruction a uh, destruction is a precursor and an inevitable counterpart of uh, creation so in lower right hand there is abaya mudra so this abaya mudra signifies the benediction that is blessing and reassuring the devotee not to be afraid uh, in the left uh, lower left hand you can uh, see this uh, lower left hand which uh, points towards the upraised foot and indicates the path of salvation so in this you can see shiva is dancing on a figure of a small dwarf so this dwarf symbolizes ignorance and the ego of an uh, individual so the matted and uh, flowing flo uh, locks that is uh, hair of shiva represent the flow of uh, river ganga so in ornamentation uh, on one ear shiva has the male earring while on the other uh, ear he has the female uh, earrings so this represent the fusion of uh, male and female Uh, which is referred as ardishvara ardhanadishvara so you can see a snake which is twisted on the arm of shiva so this snake uh, symbolizes the kundalini power which resides in the human spine in dormant stage that is uh, in uh, inactive stage so if aroused uh, that is if it awake one can attain the true consciousness so um, in back of the nadaraja you can see it is surrounded by nimb nimbus of glowing light which symbolizes the vast unending cycle of uh, life now let's see about the other school of temple architecture the first one is nayaka school so nayaka school flourished under the nayaka rulers between 16th and 18th century ad also known as the madurai school so uh, nayaka school uh, is architecturally similar to the dravidian style and it has the islamic uh, influence as well 
so unique feature of this nayaka uh, school of temple is a uh, presence of praharams or uh, huge corridors in portico around the garbhagriha along with the uh, roof ambulatory passage way so gopuram built under the nayaka rulers were largest to gopuram the, for example minakshi amman te uh, temple in madurai has the uh, tallest gopuram in the world so art of gopuram reached its climax under nayaka style and temple structure was uh, filled with the intricate carvings now let's see about vesara school so the it is also known as karnataka school of architecture which conceptualized under the later uh, chalukya ruler in the mid 7th century ad so this vesara school uh, combined the features of both uh, nagara school and dravidian school which resulted in a hybridized style Uh, so uh, features of this uh, Vesara school is uh, it emphasizes on vimana and mantaba and there is a open amulatory passage way in temple and the pillar and doorway and ceilings were decorated with intricate carving. So Chalukya of Badami and Kalyani, Rashtrakutas and Hoysala dynasty. These three were the prominent dynasties which made the Vesara style temple. so there was an influence of uh, nagara style in the curvilinear uh, shigara and the square base of uh, vesara temple and the influence of dravidian style is seen in intricate carving and uh, sculptured design of uh, vimana and step of raised uh, shihara of vesara temple example dosa sampa temple at dampal and uh, latkan temple at a hole and temple at badami etc now let's see about the vijayanagara school so the rulers of vijayanagara empire were great patrons of art and architecture with capital at hampi they combined the features of uh, chola hoysala pantya and chalukya architectural styles so in vijayanagara uh, schools uh, we had the influence of uh, indo islamic style of bijapur which was reflected in their temple of that period and features of the temple were the walls were decorated with uh, carvings and geometrical patterns gobrams were uh, built in all sides and monolithic uh, pillars were found in the temples of vijayanagara so the temples uh, had a mythical creature called uh, yali engraved on them and uh, enclosing walls were all uh, were also larger and more than one mantapa were built in each uh, temple in vijayanagara a uh, temple so this uh, cent uh, central mandaba is known as the uh, kalyana mandaba which was dedicated to the divine marriage the concept of uh, secular building inside the temple premises were introduced uh, temples were enclosed by the boundaries uh, example which uh, vitala swami temple complex uh, lotus mahal and virupaksha temple uh, and other temples in hampi so you can see the yali which is a creature uh, uh, which is engraved on the temple of uh, uh, vijayanagara the next is vijayanagara school so the rulers of vijayanagara empire were great patrons of art and architecture with capital uh, hampi so they combined the features of the chola hoysala pantyas and chalukyas architectural styles so vijayanagara school were influenced by the indo islamic style of bijapur which reflected in the temple of uh, their period and uh, features of the temple uh, the wall were decorated with carvings and uh, geometrical patterns the gop uh, gopuram were built in all sides and monolithic rock pillars were also been found the temple uh, pillar had a mythical creature yali engraved on them and the temple had enclosing wall which were larger so in the vijayanagara school of uh, temple um, there were more than one mantaba which was built in each uh, temple so the central mantaba was known as the kalyana mantaba which was dedicated to the divine marriage so the concept of secular building inside the temple premises were also introduced and temple were enclosed by boundaries so example of uh, vijayanagara temple architecture is uh, vitala swami temple uh, then uh, lotus mahal and virupaksha temple so you can see uh, yali which is the uh, mythical uh, creature which is engraved on the uh, temple wall
Now let's see about the Hoysala art. So the temple built under the Hoysala rulers in Karnataka region developed a distinct style of their own Hoysala school of art. So it developed during the period of uh, 1050 to 300 AD in uh, Bellur, Halbidu and uh, Sirinjeri. Uh, now let's see the features of the uh, architecture. So multiple shrines were built around the central pillared hall. And in Hoysala uh, School of Art, uh, in the ground plan of the Panjayatan style, the shrines led out in the shape of a star. So this was known as Tealite plan. And uh, the major building material was uh, soft soap uh, stone. So the temples were uh, built in upraised platform known as Jagati. So this uh, is uh, one meter high. The walls and stairs of the temple followed a zigzag pattern. Example, Kailashwara Temple at uh, Halibidu, Chenakeshwa Temple at Bellur and Chenakeshwara Temple at uh, Somanadapura. Now let's see about the Pala and Sena school of architecture. In Bengal region, uh, the style of architecture came to be known as uh, Pala and Sena school of architecture. Developed in 8th and 12th, uh, 12th century AD under the patronage of uh, Pala and Sena dynasty. So Palas, they were primarily Buddhist uh, of the Mahayana tradition but were tolerant and they patronized other region too, religions too. So the Pala king built lots of Viharas which is a residential hall and Chaityas which is prayer halls and stupas and the Senas were Hindus and bull temple of Hindu god and also sustained the Buddhist architecture. Thus the architecture reflected the influence of both the religion that is both the Hindu and the uh, Buddhist. Now let's see the monuments under Pala rulers, University of Nalanda, Jahantala, Odanpuri and Vikramshila. Uh, are the monuments under the Pala rulers and Sompura Mahavihara is the magnificent monastery in Bangladesh of uh, Pala rulers. And uh, the um, Dageshwari temple in Bangladesh is the monument under Sena ruler. Now let's see the feature of architecture of Sena rulers. The building had a curve or a sloping roof as uh, in bamboo huts, popularly known as bangla, uh, bangla roof. Uh, later it was developed, adopted by the Mughal architecture. So burnt brick and clay, uh, that is terracotta bricks, was uh, principal building materials uh, that is used to build the uh, temple. And the temples of this uh, region had a tall curving sihara crowned by a large amalaka similar to the Odisha school. So both the stone uh, as well as metals were used to make the sculpture of this uh, region and the figures were unique in their highly lustrous finish. So example of uh, the uh, Shena ruler temple architecture is uh, Sindeshwara Mahadeva temple in Barakar, a uh, temple around Vishnupur in West Bengal. So with this we have come to the end of the session. I hope uh, you have liked the video. Uh, so this video is a part of a uh, paid course of Vaishayasa. But uh, if you, uh, based on your response, we will consider putting it here fully. So what you have to do is, you have to like, share and subscribe to Vaishaya's YouTube channel. So thank you. Have a nice day.